good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, first of all, I'd like to thank the invitation. It's really an honor for me as a Brazilian professor to talk to so many experts today here in Brazil. I'm a gynecologist oncologist, and I work at a public hospital in Brasilia, Brazil. In the next 20 minutes, I will show you the results after two years of HPV vaccination in, as a public program due to primary prevention of HPV infection in Brazil. I hope I, I can able enough to, not to show you how nervous I am. I'm sure I'm the youngest speaker here today. I have no disclosures about this, this publication. As a gynecologist oncologist, it's impossible for me not to talk about the cervical cancer numbers. I will not dare talk about other types of cancer related to HPV infection, such as anal and head and neck cancer. Global can show us a pretty much realistic number of this disease. In 2012, this data estimated that for each 100,000 women, 528 new cases of cervical cancer and 266 deaths. When you look at America's region, the number of cases and deaths are 83 new cases and 36 deaths, again, for each 100,000 women. To demonstrate you, ladies and gentlemen, Brazilian statistics, I will show numbers recently published by me and my research group, as you can see. When you talk about cervical cancer in Brazil, we estimated in 2012 more than 17,000 new cases. This table shows the epidemiology of cancer in Brazilian women. As you can see, the cervical cancer represents almost 10% of all cases of malignancy in Brazilian women. And that's why in 2015, cervical cancer stands as a very common cause of death in Brazil, even being a preventable disease. Now let's talk about Brasilia. Brasilia was the first city in Brazil to start the public HPV vaccination. As some of you may know, Brasilia is the capital of Brazil and stands a population of 2.4 million people. And we have in Brasilia 750,000 women aged from 25 to 64 years old. And also 330 new cases of cervical cancer, as estimated the National Institute of Cancer in 2012. Now I will briefly show the current national screening program for pre-invasive uh, lesions and cervical cancer in Brazil. In Brazil, we have a national health program, which is public and covers, supposed to cover all citizens. It's not free, it's a public program. In Brazil, women aged from 25 to 64 years old are screened for pre-invasive lesions and cervical cancer. We still use the pap smear uh, cytology as a screening method, and it is collected each three years after two consecutive tests performed in the interval of one year if it's normal. It's an opportunistic screening program. A weak uh, point of the program is because it's not organized. Furthermore, we, can, we count with a very weak catch-up programs for this disease. We have some national publication about the coverage of this national screening program that shows rates from 55 to 68% of the population and others with more optimistic with rates ranging for 73 to 92%. We have some national, now let's talk specific about the national HPV vaccination program. As I said, it's a public program which first began in Brasilia in 2013. The coverage of vaccination was proposed for girls aged from nine to 13 years old. And it was performed at schools, public and private ones. It was chosen the quadrivalent HPV vaccine, Gardasil, and we first established the three doses protocol with those at zero, two, and six months interval. The reasons that lead us to use the HPV vaccine national program were based on several publications, especially due to the Australian program and the Patricia trial results. Here you can see one of the Australian publication, uh, publication of 2011. 
and another one of 2012. This is a publication from Professors Xavier Boss, San Jose, and Casasaga. I'm pretty sure that many of you here today know these authors. They have many publications on HPV vaccination and HPV infection related disease. And also participate, as you can see, on Patricia trial. So to validate our national program of HPV vaccination, Patricia trial was an important publication. At this point, I must make a consideration. I was not the responsible for the development of the vaccine program in Brasilia. I was requested to provide publication and articles of HPV vaccination programs to a scientific committee, and they were the main responsible for choosing the vaccine, age group, and dose interval. Briefly, this trial was designed for a different age group. Girls of this trial were aged from 15 to uh, 25 years old. However, they had a very good result. result. The efficacy rate for prevent CNI1 plus lesions was 96.5%. For uh, CNI2 plus lesions was even higher, 98.4%. And to prevent the immediate precursor cervical cancer or CIN3 plus, the results published on Patricia trial was 100%. As any public program, some parents refuse to have their daughters vaccinated. And this, in this case, they sign a refuse HPV vaccination term. It doesn't happen a lot. In general, Brazilian citizens seem to like vaccination program. Girls who missed the class in the day of the vaccination could have it done at public health centers. The vaccination was performed at schools during a whole week and with this, some girls just don't show up to classes. So they, uh, that's why we also give the, the opportunity for getting the vaccine at health centers. Now let's show the results of the program for the, these two first years of vaccination. The percentage of girls vaccinated was really high, as you can see. For the first dose, 94% of eligible girls were vaccinated. And this rate does not change for the next two doses, with more than 94% uh, for the second one and almost 90% at the third dose. To calculate the coverage rates, we assume that eligible girls were for the second dose were only those who whom take the first one, the same way we did to calculate the coverage of the third dose. And to calculate the percentage of coverage of the first dose, we use the number of total girls uh, registered at the schools they, that received the vaccine. However, we, we compare the number of eligible girls to take the first dose who were registered at schools to those who were really vaccinated, the rate drops to 78%, which is still a good rate. Uh, based on many publications, we assume the efficacy of two doses of HPV vaccine. It will make us think even more about the number of doses for a large population vaccination and the feasibility of the program. This publication that compares the HPV vaccine according to antibody response with two and three doses recently published. And this one compares the immune response and safety with a long follow-up after 48 months. About side effects of vaccination in Brazil. We have registered a teeny number of girls, less than 1%. The side effects registered were erythema and local pain, besides fever. The most important, no severe injury or death were registered due to the vaccination program. Now, the new goals for 2015, in fact, a challenge. As a program uh, has well succeeded in Brasilia, the national authorities decided to start the national program in 2015 for girls aged 9 to 11 years in the whole country. The government decided to use the extended protocol dose with those at time zero, six, and 60 months. And also include 
women aged 14 to 26 years HIV positive. This decision was based on several publications, such as you can see. This is a publication that showed the safety and immunogenicity of HPV vaccine in HIV adolescents and young adults. This is a randomized double-blind clinical trial comparing two different, different HPV vaccines, Gardasil and Sarvarix, in HIV positive infected adults. And this last one that published the safety on, of HPV vaccine for HIV positive children. In summary, the cervical cancer remains as an important cause of death in women in my country. The current screening program for cervical cancer and pre-invasive lesions is not organized and needs modifications. Brasilia first started the HPV vaccination as a primary prevention for HPV infection and cervical cancer. We could establish a high coverage rate. We now have a national HPV vaccination program established, and I don't expect this program to change the cervical cancer status in Brazil so fast. I know and I expect the reduce of number of new cases and deaths for the cervical cancer in Brazil for the next two or three decades. But it's a start and I think a good one. I have to, to, to thank those who teach me and I learn a lot of this group. Dr. Sarian from Unicamp who really teach me how to make statistic. Dr. Zeferino who show me how to interpret clinical trials. Dr. Rabelo Santos, which is a specialist in, cyto in cytology. And the most important, Dr. Deschamps, Sophie Deschamps, in my opinion, by far, the most intelligent woman I know and the best gynecologist oncologist in Brazil, in my opinion. This is the, hop the hospital where I work in Brasilia. Thanks a lot. Thank you very much. No, they don't. Have, actually, it's a public program. It's they, public program. Uh, yeah, they all citizens pay some taxes, yes. but we they don't have to pay anything more than that. I see. So, but it is a free a vaccination. Yes, so I I really don't like to to use the the term free because in Brazil we used to pay a lot of taxes, so it's all included. Yes, well, like in Canada, we do. <laughs> But personally, I think it's uh, a good start to have uh, such a program like that. I just uh, really like to have opportunity of uh, make a, a uh, try to make a trial like Patricia in the patients who are getting the vaccine today. But all the girls that got the vaccine the past two years uh, are not going to uh, are not showing up at the the follow-ups. So that's my Really concerned about that. What about the boys? Do you recommend them to be vaccinated? Yes, we have some publication recently published that show that if boys uh, are vaccinated, it will improve the efficacy even more to those lesions related to HPV infection, but not cervical one, like I said, anal and, and head and neck cancer. So I think it's a, a, a good way of thinking. Thank <laughs> you. 
And now the next step, there is a, a non-avalent vaccine development. And we have really good publication about the efficacy of this non-avalent vaccine. So I think that will be, in the next years, we will heard much more about that. And, and Donna, Donna said nine. Yes, nine, nine okay. types. Yeah, there, there are so many within uh, the social vaccine. Yeah. Thank you.